Hey guys, I don't just kept like you bring you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Sunday. And today I want to go over Office 365 Exchange Admin Center. And uh, I'm going to break it down. I'm not going to go over every single thing. Today we're just going to go over mailboxes and I'm going to break it down in a non-technical way that you understand it. And the, the reason why I do that is because I know there's some people here that have, they have some people learn, some people have their own way of learning, right? So we have to break it down into smaller parts. That way, everyone understands what I'm talking about. Okay, so let me share my screen with you and show you what I mean. All right, so today we're going to go over Office 365, and obviously, I'm going to put a timeline on everything so you get to see what I'm talking about. You could skip certain parts if you don't care about it. So what is a SIP address? What is SMTP? So SIP, session, SIP is a session initiation protocol. This is also used for TCP IP. Base network protocol, you could, you, you could use this to set up and control communication on several subscribers. Think of it as a contact number for yourself that follows you everywhere you go. So SIP address is commonly seen on instant messages, pop, video calls. Where have I seen this? I've seen this on Skype for Business. So if, you, if you're an admin, like I'm an admin myself. So if you, if you have a link server, you will set up a SIP address for that person that's starting on Monday morning. That way they're able to log into their account using Skype for Business. Uh, another way you'll see this is a SIP address is when you're doing a video call using Polycom systems in a VC room. So it depends where you are, but that's, that's, that's where I have seen it. Uh, SM, SMTP, a simple mail transfer protocol server application, which is used to send, receive, and relay outgoing mail between senders and receivers. Um, there are ports for default unencrypted, which is SMTP. So the ports are 25, 587, 2525. Ports for SMTP with SSL. 465-250-25. Just remember those ports. You may be asked that in a job interview. You may not, but it's good to know anyway, right? Then there is POP3, and what is IMAP? POP3 is uh, non-encrypted POP3 is port 1110 or 110, 110. Uh, port 995, connect using POP3 secure. That's what that is. In case you go in an interview, you would know what the port number is. Post Office Protocol 3. This is for receiving email. POP3 is like your UPS, FedEx, your mailman who holds your email until it's picked up. That's basically what it is. Hey, here, I'm going to hold your email. That's basically what it is. It lets you download email messages on your local PC and read it, read it even if you're offline. That's the benefits of POP3. Then you have IMAP, which is using port 143. IMAP is non-encrypted, 143. Uh, port 993 is connecting using IMAP secure. Then there is IMAP, which is Internet Message Access Protocol. That's basically what it means. Let's you access emails wherever you go, basically reading emails from a server. Because of this, you could check your email on different devices while missing a thing. That's the benefits of it. Both protocols are commonly used on an email client. For example, if you're using Outlook and you're setting up Gmail on an Outlook client, that's an example. And I'll put a screenshot here somewhere and you can see what I'm talking about. But typically, you will set up um, port ports uh, for, for 1110 or, or some sort of port for Gmail. If you're setting up Gmail, you have to, you have to do POP3 and IMAP and Outlook. That's just how it's set up. So if you want to add Outlook on a Gmail account, that's the way you will do it, okay? Uh, what is MAPP or M-A-P-I? Messaging Application Programming Interface. This allows you to access email using Outlook or MAPP email clients. Mailbox will continue to get emails in the, is the person... Uh, if the person, sorry, typo right there. If the person can access emails using Outlook web app or POP email client or IMAP client. By default, MAPI POP3 IMAP4 email clients is, is enabled when mailbox is created. So basically what this is, is if you disable MAPI, you're basically disabling the Outlook des desktop application. So I can't use the Outlook down here on the bottom. That's basically what it does. So if you if you remove this or disable, not remove it, but disable it, then your, your Outlook your Outlook app will not work at all. That's basically what it is, okay? So now when we think about, see, I went over here and, and looked at it. It's the, uh, Internet Message Access Protocol. So when we think about Outlook, we think about Office 365. When we think about Office 365, we think about Admin Center, right? So this is where I went to. You got to go into office.com, all right? You see this beautiful page right over here. You click on the tabs on the top. You click on Admin. And then you scroll all the way down to show all and you click exchange. That's what I'm going over today. And immediately you'll be, you're all welcome by this, by this background, the setup, right? I'm using the classic version of it, which is the old version, which is this one. So this is where, this is how I got into this, if that makes sense. So I'm going to close out of that. And today we're just going to go over, um, 
just mailboxes, but everything in mailboxes, not just like one thing. You'll see what I mean, right? So you double click on Kevin Pornario. You have all these tabs right over here. Before I even go over that, you have this edit button right here. You have this magnifying glass to search someone. You have the refresh button. You have add, remove columns, set default message res restriction size. You have delete it, delete mailbox if I want to delete this mailbox. You have export data to CSV file, which means it goes over into a, like, ex like an Excel file. You have advanced search. And then if you click on it, if you click on Kevin over here on the right hand side, you have unified messaging system, which is used for Cisco call manager. If you know anything about Cisco call manager, um, we, we're not using that today. Uh, you have mobile devices. You have convert to share mailbox. If you want to convert this mailbox into a share mailbox, you can. You have your archiving. You have your place in hold and email connectivity. So if you double click on Kevin Pornario, you get to see his first name, his last name, his display name. Display name. If you click on it, it tells you more about it. It tells you the name will appear on the address book on the to and from line when this email is sent from this mailbox. It's basically what it is. So if I replace the name to something else, it's going to come up with a different name, obviously. Aliases is a portion of the email address on the left side of the at symbol. It must be unique to your organization. So my aliases or my unique ID is Kevin at kevtechitsupport.com. And then here you can hide it from the address book. So it says here, if you select this option, the user will not be able to see you anymore. So typically when you disable an account on, on a, an active directory, right? You might have to go into here on Office 365 on Exchange Admin Center, and you may have to hide in from the address book. So basically they no longer show up over here. So if you create a new message, right? And if I type Kevin Pornario, it's gonna show up. But if I go over here, right? and I do hide from address book, he will no longer show up. That's basically what I'm doing with that option. So if, if you go here and you check mark it and you hit save, he's not gonna show up anymore. That's basically what that is. So you're not gonna delete the account. We don't do that, right? We hide it from the address book. That's what we do. All right, so mailbox usage is when I last logged in. This is accurate because I opened up Outlook web app a couple minutes ago. So it was like literally a minute ago. So this makes sense. Um, here too, it says the quota, what the mailbox quota is for me how much I've been using for emails. Then you're, you have your contact information. You may have to fill this out in your job because a lot of companies have you do this. You have to fill out their, their name, their email, their, their fax number, their office number, their work number. And then when you do all that, it replicates over to over here. And then you see all their contact information right over here. You get to see everything that, that there, you know, that, that's there. That's basically what that's for, right? Then you have your organization. So you may have, you, they, they may be like, uh, uh, I don't know, like human resources, right? So maybe they are uh, HR manager and you put HR manager right here. Maybe they're part of an HR department and then you put their company, whatever it is, minus kept like IT support, right? So that's basically what this is. And if you have a manager you got to put in there, you put a manager in there. You have email addresses, right? Email address, by, def it, by default, it selects one reply email address. And then it says here the default reply address is display in bold to change that default reply address. Select the email address that you want to set as default and double click to edit it. So here, it used to be this one right over here. It used to be Kevin IT support, Kevin IT support on Microsoft.com. I actually have a website called Captech IT support.com and I parked it to Office 365. So now I own Captech IT support.com as my email address. So I went here and I changed it to this one. This is the default email address. And here you, you'll be asked to do this, by the way. So if you work in a job environment, you may have a guy like, um, uh, I don't know, like Richard, Richard Young, blah, 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 blah. And their email is too long, right? And they're like, can you just change my, my email to Richard at kevtechitsupport.com? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that for you right now. So then you would, you would create another email address right over here. And you make that the reply email address. And you make that as the default email address. Because what if, what if the person's name is too long, right? And you, you don't want the user or the person that they're working with emailing that long string of names. So instead of doing that, you create an alias, a shortcut to that name. So then when you email it, it still goes to that same mailbox. You may be asked to do this for a user. You may be asked to do this for a distribution group, which is groups up, up here, right? Or you may be asked to do this for a share mailbox. So maybe the company has recently changed their... their um, I don't know, like their, 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 their mailbox name and you have to change it. So you have to go here and change it. So not here, obviously on share mailboxes, but that's what you'll be doing. So all these 
Groups, share mailboxes. You may be asked to change it under email addresses. This is a tab for that. So you can change it and create another one. It's basically what that is. Then you have your mailbox features, the uh, share policy, right? Share policy for contacts and calendar. Your role assignment for RBIC rules. Then you have your retention policy. There's like so much to talk about retention policy. When, when, you, when I think about retention policy is... Um, the, the things that get archived that are automatically moved to a server. That's basically what retention policy is. So in some companies, your emails might be good for two years, three years, four years. After two years, three years, it, it, it doesn't stay on your Outlook on your local PC anymore. It goes to a server and stores it on a server instead. And some companies might use Mimecast. Some companies might use Proofpoint. And then some companies might use the default Office 365 uh, app, like the one I have right over here. They may be using this. And basically what that means is it, it's the, the emails are only good for one year and then it gets, it gets stored on the server. So then it doesn't take up space on their local computer. Now it's on the server. Why do we do that? We do that because we don't want someone having 15 years of emails on their local machine because then the whole PC will crash, right? So instead, we have it stored on the cloud or on a server or some sort of platform, which is, it could be Proofpoint. It could be Mimecast, like I said. It could be uh, Enterprise Vault. Um, it could be anything. They, whatever the company is using, you're, you're, restore, you're storing it in some sort of archive system. So it's not going to be local on the machine. It'll be on some sort of portal or some sort of add-in that you have to click on to open and log into that in order to restore that email and put it back on your inbox. That's basically what this is all about. I mean, I could make a whole in-depth video on this, which I am at some point, but don't worry about this right now. But if you get asked in a job interview about this, you know what it is now, right? So address book, obviously is a policy that you set up for your address book. And then you have all the things right over here. You have disable exchange active sync. So what does that mean? That means the mobile device gets blocked from active sync. They can't add email on their phone. That's basically what that is. Disable OWA for devices. What does that mean? They cannot access the Outlook web app on their mobile device. You had view details right over here. You have, you have this thing for email for email on your phone, MDM, mobile device management. So here you could allow it. You could deny it, right? Block it. You could wipe the whole phone and delete the whole phone if you want. And you create a, a rule for that similar mobile device. You click on it, right? Doesn't see it because I deleted the email, by the way. Then you could delete it. And then we're gonna we're gonna do that right now. Actually, we're actually gonna go over how to add email on your phone right now, actually. So now you guys know at least you have something here. So this is a little bit, I'm going, I'm covering a little bit of everything today because I want you guys to understand how things work, right? So this is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna actually gonna go here and I am going to share my screen, right? Just give it a second. And my screen is being shared right now on my mobile device, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Outlook. I downloaded Outlook, by the way. Like, oh, where, where did Outlook come from? I got it from the Google Play Store, right? I'm going to hit Add Account. I'm going to do Kevin. You know, my email is kevtechitsupport.com, right? It already auto-populate. I'm going to hit Continue, right? Then I'm going to put maybe later to log in, right? It already added on my, I, I didn't have to authenticate or logins. I did this already earlier before, right? And then if you go over here, you go over here to my, my screen, it should show up right over here. And it, it's already there, right? On my mobile device, let me open it again. It looks like it's, it's trying to download emails again. Yeah, on my mobile device, if you see there's the Outlook app and then all these tabs right over here, all right? And then it's adding a draft right over there. If you click, the gear tab right over here, right? I have to go over this because you may be asked to troubleshoot mobile devices with email, right? You have the option to remove focus inbox, which is really annoying. It tells you what it is, by the way. If you click on it, it tells you more information about it. And it says it prioritizes the important emails. I hate this freaking thing, by the way. So you want to check it, right? You have organized mail by email by threads that creates a thread of emails of a person you're talking to. You don't want to, you don't want that. So you get rid of that. And you may be asked in, their, in your job to do this, by the way. I know this is a little silly thing that it seems tedious to you and it seems like simple to you. But for someone that's non-tech savvy, that does not know 
how to use a mobile device. You have to do this for them and help them with it. Obviously, we try to help the user. We try to make it as simple as possible. So I uncheck those two things, right? And then you have your swipe options right over here. You may have to walk them through swipe options. You have your notifications. They, you may, they may want notifications for certain things. You don't know. And you have your calendar apps right here to connect other calendar apps. You have your categories right over here. And you have your Explore Microsoft options. And then if you click on your email app or your email name right over here, you have other options here. So if you get a call by a user or a customer and says, Kev, I'm, I'm out of the office right now and I want to put my out of office reply on my computer and I don't have my computer right now. Can I do it from my phone? Yes, you can. You go right over here and hit automatic replies. You check mark it. And then it says right there, reply to everyone. Reply only to my organization. Use different message from my organization's external account. You could do that right over here. It's entirely up to you. I'm gonna hit okay. Uh, you have sync calendars. If you wanna sync your calendars, you wanna sync your contacts, you wanna block external images, you can. Suggest replies, text prediction, reset account. So typically what we do is to make life, uh, as I say life complex, to make life easy for everyone. We do not delete the account. We try to reset it first before we delete it. So it's like a soft reset on the, on the app itself. And that's basically what that is, right? So then if you get out of this, uh, you have your OneDrive. You delete account for this as well. And let's get out of this. And it says automatic replies, turn off. I'm going to turn that off. I don't know why I have that on, turn it on by accident. See, see now focus inbox is gone. And the reply to thread is gone. If you do filter, you have filter by unread flag attachments. You have your new email right over here. So you can click a new email and we got it. You put your attachments right over here. You can take a picture of something if you like. That's entirely up to you. Um, you have your email right over here, BCCCC. Uh, attachments. This is for uh, sent availability. And you have a few other things right over here. It's very interesting, actually. If you look at it. There's so much to there's so much to do here. Like there's troubleshooting, so for license. And if you're having an issue with the product right there, you could contact Outlook Mobile Support if you want. That's entirely up to you. And you have this other option right over here. Uh, play my emails, listen to emails later, right? And you have all these other options right over here. If you click on settings again, you can go back over here. Like I said, you can sync, sync your uh, information. You have your swipe options, a uh, week to start, Sunday, appearance. If you want to change the appearance, if you want to make it dark, blue, red, you could change the settings if you like. Now it's extremely bright for me. <laughs> uh, you could change it to dark if you like. I'm changing it back to dark. You put a picture in there if you like. And uh, yeah, and you have your calendar right over here. If you want to look at your calendar, you can. It's Father's, today's Father's Day. I know today's Father's Day. I hope you guys have a great, I hope you guys are having a great Father's Day. Today's Father's Day. You have your, your tab right over here and you could create an event right over here. If you like, you could make it a Zoom online meeting if you want, entirely up to you. I have my Zoom plugin combined together with Outlook. That's the reason why it's showing up like that. And you click right over here. You have your days, three days, month, agenda. You go back over here, you could, you could, you have your separation of calendars that you have created. You want to get out of this screen, you just hit the mailbox right over here. You want to do a search, you click right over here. You do Kevin, right? We search for Kevin. And it searches for everything. And, and if you're not happy with the search, right? This is you're not happy with your search, just click on filter right over here. Include deleted items and has attachments. And yeah, that's it. That's that's pretty much it for uh, mobile devices. I mean, I, I, I could show you more stuff you could do, but this is all you care about. You may be asked, like, how do you do this on the Outlook app? How do you do this on the Outlook app? How do you do that? Or how do you reset my Outlook app? Or how do you how do you remove organized by thread? Or how do you do this and remove um, the focus center, you know? So you may be asked about a focus inbox. You may be asked about that. You don't know. We don't know. So you want to you wanna look into that, okay? To make it out of this. And I'm going to stop sharing my phone and it looks good. And I'm going to stop sharing. So now you see here, it says access granted right over here. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to reopen it again. Uh, it says access denied, which is fine. I'm going to delete it right over here. And I'm going to hit OK. And then when you do that, let's see what happens if I do that. All right.
going to refresh my page. So there's no emails. It's, it's going to give you a notification. So I had a notification earlier about deleting my um, my mail, which is fine. We're gonna, we're, it's okay. So I'm going to go back to the to that tab right there, right? Let's go back to this. All right, so I get I went over this. Now we go over email connectivity. So what is this? So this is to disable the outlook what the outlook on the web to delete to disable this one. So I'm going to disable it for fun. And I'm going to show you what happens when I disable it. I'm going to hit save, right? Hit okay. Right? Um clicked on the wrong one, which is fine. I'm going to open this up again. I'm going to go back to this. Just give it a couple. It takes time to replicate. So remember we went over this. So we went over IMAP and POP3. So if I disable these two things, their outlook, the outlook of the person's account is not going to work. It's going to be all messed up. Remember IMAP, IMAP P, uh, MAPI? Remember I went over this? Yeah, it's basically what it is. Basically, you you uh, go in here, I disable it, and the outlook app doesn't work. So litigational, this is pretty cool, actually, if you click on it, right? Uses properties to specify how long the mailbox would be on litigation hold. Use the dates to specify the duration. For infinite, for infinite duration, simply leave this empty. So when this user's mailbox is put on litigation hold, the user can create deleted items from their mailbox, but the items are retained by exchange. That's basically what this is for. And then you have, yeah, I'm just gonna turn it off. Then you have archiving disabled, archiving your details, right? Uh, it tells you right here, unlimited storage is premium feature, plan two. Um, basically, you could you could create an archive retention plan right over here. Remember, we, we spoke about archiving, right? This is basically what it is. So I'm going to disable that. And then you have your mail, flow, your mail flow, which is your delivery options, right? If you do enable mail forwarding, what happens is you could you could basically, the Kevin Polinario email gets forwarded to another account. So here you hit browse. And maybe I, I want Caesar to get my emails, right? And I want it to get delivered to my inbox, both addresses. So this is deliver message to both forwarding address and mailbox. Anytime an email gets sent, it goes to both places. That's basically what it is. And this is basically the number of recipients allowed a BCCCC on an email sent by a user. So I could change this to 1,000. I could change it to 900. I could change it to 2,000. So this is the maximum number of recipients that I'm able to add on a CC or BCC line or a two line. That's basically what it is. So if you ever go to a job and it says you no longer or you have no space to, to, to add another recipient, it's probably because of this. They probably put like some sort of policy on this. So this is what this is. It actually creates a copy and get and sends it over to Caesar. Um, why would you do that, by the way? What's the, what's the, let me go back to this. What's the purpose of this? So this is basically, um, if someone leaves a company, like, like someone leaves a company, you put an out of office reply. What do you do is you put an out, out of office reply. And some people don't know that that person left the company, right? So what you do is you enable this and it goes to the other person that got, that has that position now. So say, for example, uh, someone leaves marketing, right? And you have a new guy that, that just got hired for marketing. So the guy that was let go, the guy that left the company, his email gets forwarded to the new person and then they get the emails from that person. So that's why you enable mail forwarding. That's basically what that's for. That's why you would do it, if that makes sense. Then there's a message size restriction, which controls the maximum size of messages. So if you have an, if you have an email, right? And you get like a message error when you're sending an attachment to someone, you're going to get an error message saying that the, the file is too big. Please try again later or please please send again later or please try again later. The server will say something like that. It will give you an error message. You, you, you only have a limited amount of size of attachments that you could send to someone. This is basically what this is. You control the size of the file that you send to someone. That's what this is. So I could actually restrict it if I want. I could, I could say I only want it to be 1KB. You know, just delete all that. You know, you could change it to whatever you want. And then here is message delivery restrictions. So... These are messages that you could accept from people. And these are only, only so this is right here. This select is option to allow this user to receive email messages sent by everyone. But then here you can block it and add only a certain sender in here. Require that all senders are authenticated. See, it gives you more options right over here. And then you can reject emails from a certain someone or something. That's basically what this is for.
it's pretty cool actually there's a lot a lot of information right here. and you have your member of so this is distribution groups i'm part of captech group captech it support service desk just groups that you get added to so if you want to add someone to a group you don't do it from here obviously you can't do it from here you go into distribution group or groups up here and then add it that way then you have your mail type. This is a mail type to display when people send emails to this user. The mail type can have a maximum of 175 characters. Like see, it says here, I'll give you an example. It says you an example right here. Please allow up to two business days to respond. So you can actually create some sort of like message that you want to display for you when, when someone tries to message you. And um, before I go into mail delegation, I want to see if this actually worked. So I disable email connectivity, right? So I'm going to refresh this and it's probably taking time to replicate. So let me go back here. So I did disable it, right? Still not replicated yet. So let me see if I can. Uh, email connectivity disable. There we go. There, that was, that's the message I was waiting for. So this is right there. Uh, mailbox being accessed doesn't have the valid account state protocol disabled. So remember, we talk about protocols, right? It's disabled. I disabled it. So I went over here and I disabled it. So I'll go back here and enable it, right? I'm going to go ahead and enable it again. It takes time to replicate, by the way. This is not like a one time thing that it's fast. It takes a little bit of, it takes a couple of minutes. The reason why I'm going over that is because in a job environment, right? You might have the Outlook app on your computer, but you may not be able to go to the website. Some jobs is blocked. I know people that work with me. I know, I think Steven, that he has a job in his company and, and the, the Outlook web app on, on, the, on the browser is blocked. And that's because of this reason. This is why it's blocked. It's because of that reason. They blocked it on the server, on Exchange server. They blocked you from going into your, into your browser and accessing it. And that's basically what this is all about. That's basically what this is. All right. Now I'm going to go to mailbox, mailbox delegation. So you have your send as permission allows you to send email from this mailbox. Um, and a message appears to be sent by the mailbox owner. Then you have your send on behalf permissions allows you to delegate send email or behalf of this mailbox owner from this line. And it's sent by indicates that the message was sent by the delegate on behalf of the mailbox owner. Then you have full access permission, allows you to delegate open mailbox and behave as the mailbox owner. So how does this work? I'm gonna actually did it already. So if you go, if I went into, I believe it's, did it for Caesar, I believe, right? I added myself as a send as behalf for Caesar. I ended myself as send on behalf and send as. I also added his mailbox to my account. So how does that work? I'm gonna show you right now. So actually I'm gonna go into, by VM, right? And if you if you know anything about Office 365, you need to download it, right? So we're gonna go into office.com, right? I'm already logged in. I'm gonna hit install and I'm gonna hit premium office apps and I'm gonna let it install. I'm gonna hit open, right? And this is very important by the way. So you may work in a job environment that they don't use VPN, right? They just have a personal computer and they have to get into their email. They want to install Office 365 on their PC, right? So you need to know about this. So you may be doing this for someone. So you may be like, okay, uh, such and such, Nick, I need you to go to office.com and uh, I'm going to help you log in and I need you to go to install Office app and install it. So that's basically what this is, right? And if you go to the gear tab right over here, you have your theme. You could change your password right over here. So maybe the user does not know how to change their password. And they're very uncomfortable with changing their password and they don't know how to do it. You walk them through, go to office.com, click the gear on the top right-hand side, and then click change your password. And then you could change your password. So you just, you know, that's, that, those are things you need to know. If you're doing help desk or IT support, you may be helping them with this. You don't know, right? So then if you click over here, you do view my account, right? Let me just expand it a little more. You probably can't see my whole screen. Let me... Size to one. Okay, it looks good. Yeah, you have your security information. You have your devices. So you manage your devices right over here. You can sign out, password, settings, office apps, subscriptions. Um, if you click on this, organization. Click on this, you have all your apps right over here. Um, if you click on this, 
you have switch organizations and you have, you could sign out as well. And you have your security information, organization, Let's wait. I'm gonna close out of this. I'm gonna hit cancel. Actually, I'm gonna close out of this. Close out of this and let that install. So I wanna do it from the beginning because I wanna show you what happens when you, when you um, log into Office 365 for the first time. Then I also wanna go over um, send on behalf access. Then I also wanna go over mailboxes of me accessing Caesar's mailbox and how you will do it on the mail application itself or Outlook application itself and how to do it on the actual web interface. So how to go into someone else's mailbox on that web interface. So we're gonna do both today and show you how to do that. And then after that, I'll wrap it up after that. Just So this is basically a little bit of everything. It's not just me, you know, talking to you the entire time without explaining anything, all right? So while that's downloading, I actually wanna show you, let me see if it works for me. So while that's downloading, I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna do it on the, I'm gonna do it on my computer because it's actually, wait, I think it's almost done downloading. Uh, yeah, it's done downloading, okay. Well, surprise, I was about to go over something, but seems like it's done, so. Actually, it says it's still not downloaded yet, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Let me minimize it. So, hopefully, this works now. Let's refresh it again. Oh, it's working. So, I gave myself access to Caesar's mailbox, right? How do you open his mailbox? So, if you go to the top right hand side and you open another mailbox, if I type Caesar in here, it should let me get into it. So, if I type Caesar and hit open, it should let me open his account. So you see his accounts right here. Look, I'm on his account right now. So why would you do this? So if you're help desk or IT support, you may be asked to do an out-of-office reply for Caesar or for someone else. So you give yourself mailbox access to their account right over here, right? You go in here, you add yourself as full access. In some jobs, you may have access to this, you may not, right? And then you do, you wait a couple of minutes because it takes time to replicate. Then you go in here and you do open another mailbox. And then you go in here and then you could do, you could do a bunch of things right over here. You click here, you click here, you click view outlook settings. Um, you have your attachments, you have your rules, you have your general, your notifications, right? You have your mail right over here. Automatic, so I could set up an automatic reply for Caesar. He's no longer part of the company, right? So I could do it on his behalf or I could do it if they want me to, if they want me to do it, if they want me to do it for them, I could do it for them. So that's basically what this is for. So now I have access to the whole mailbox from here. And I could delete their mailbox. I could do so many things right over here. I, could, I even have access to, to his calendar. See, it still says Caesar. If you see all the way at the top over here, it says Caesar. I still have access to his calendar. Now, if I want to get out of this, I'm just going to go open another mailbox. Type Kevin again. Open. And I get out of that and I go back to my screen and then I'm gonna go back to mail. So now I'm back on my one, on my mail. So that, that's basically what that is. You could actually open someone else's mailbox if you have full access to it. You could do so many things. Just be careful with it because you could delete their email, you could delete their calendar. There's like so many things you could do in that. So now I'm gonna show you how it looks like on the Microsoft Office app. So it should be fully downloaded already, it is. So we're gonna go open up Outlook, All right? It should open. Give it a second. It's going to be a little, little slow. A little slow. Just give it a, have patience with it. So now if you go here, right, I have a distribution group called tech support, right? Have my favorites right over here. Have my search right over here. And it looks like the mailbox isn't here yet. So typically when you, when you have a mailbox, right? It actually adds it on top of your mailbox. So if you give yourself access to someone's mailbox, it actually adds it on top of the mailbox. So it's actually a little slow right now. So just give it a, I think it's doing something. That's why it's extremely slow. So let me, let me exit out of it again. And let me reopen Outlook again. It's because it's adding his mailbox. Look at that. See, that's why it's extremely slow. It's opening Caesar's mailbox. So if I check that, right, 
Now I have access to his mailbox and I have access to my mailbox. And then when, I, when we talked about archiving, right? Remember I talked about archiving? This is what I mean by archiving. So I'm gonna go to file, I'm gonna go to account, I'm gonna to go to account settings, click on change. See, use cash mode, exchange mode to download email to Outlook profile. So I could set it for three months. I could set it for five years. I could set it for all time, three months. So in your job environment, you might be you might be doing this. You may be doing this. You may your job might have it set for one year. Your job might have it set for six months. You might your job might have it set for two years, three years, four years, five years, all time. So basically, this whatever whatever stays here, it's whatever gets stored on the computer on the local computer. And where is this, by the way? Where is KevTechITSupport.com? Where is this data file? Right, right here. Data files are right here. Where is this Outlook profile? Hit open files, file location. It's right here. So as you keep getting emails, the inbox gets a lot bigger. And that's basically what that's all about, right? So now I'm gonna show you what, how, what the send on behalf access is, right? So if you click new email, um, I'm gonna go to email, I clicked it too fast, right? Expand it, right? You have these different tabs right over here. You have insert, you have options. Options will be the one that you will do, right? You have the from option. So when you hit the from option, it enables this from tab, right? You hit other email address. I'll type Caesar and let's see if Caesar pops up. Caesar Morales. So I'm gonna go into Caesar. So you get stuck right over here. You could you could do it this way. So the Caesar, okay. It's retrieving template from the server. Give it a second. There we go. Now it's Caesar at kevtechitsupport.com. And I'm going to email myself. And I'm going to do test. And I'm going to send it. And let's see if it works. If it does work, you should see an email coming through. There we go. Test is right there. Now, how do you confirm that that email was sent from Caesar? It says right there, Caesar sent to Kevin Parnurio. How do you confirm even further? Remember, I have access to his mailbox, right? Let's go to send items. It's right there. It's actually, it actually is supposed to go to both of them, but there's a, there's a special, um, there's a special command you need to run to do that, by the way. So this is another, this is another, Another story for another day. It's actually, this is an issue right here. So I had this issue before where someone sent on behalf of someone else and it's not in their send items. You have to do something for this to work, by the way. So that's why it's not there. If you go here, it's right here. But if you go to inbox, it's sent by Caesar. So, and that's it. That's pretty much it. That, that pretty much uh, covers everything um, for today of Office 365 mailboxes. I'm gonna go over them one by one. Um, hopefully this video makes sense. Hopefully you learned something from this. I was, I was actually super excited to go over this because this is something that I actually wanted to go over for a really long time. Um, before I let you guys go, I wanna say thank you. Um, thank you, Buy Me Coffee gang. I have, a group called, I have a website called Buy Me Coffee. Thank you guys for buying me coffee, uh, drink, drinks and beers, I greatly appreciate it. Um, thank you, my YouTube memberships, and thank you, Discord community, and thank you, everyone that has watched this video. I hope this video helps you out. I hope you guys have a great day. You guys know what to do. I don't got to say anything. And um, share this video with your friends. Maybe they need help with Office 365. Maybe they need help at Exchange Admin Center. I had to break it down a little more because I don't want to make it too complicated. All right. With that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday, and I hope you guys have a good Father's Day. Take care. Peace.